So that's that's really setting the stage then for uh, some pretty significant things where um, the church actually with the Crusades is saying now we're actually going to go and attack. Yes, like we're we're yeah. going to go on the offensive here. Yeah. Um, and you, before we started recording, you you made an interesting point where that may have some correlations with the concept, the Islamic concept of jihad mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. so forth. So yeah, I love to speak into that. Well, yeah. before we get there, there's, mm -hmm. there's a little something I wanted to say about um, often when a, 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 a tribe or a nation um, conquers other people uh, kind of out of the blue, just mm -hmm. they, they suddenly become aggressive mm -hmm. uh, like the Arabs did, like they, they conquered um, this huge area and it eventually imposed their language and to a large degree their religion. It's really interesting. Um, they're usually driven by some kind of fervor and it might just be con conquest so we get wealth. Mm. But one of the interesting things is after the, um, the Muslims conquered all these Christian areas, for quite a while they used the Christians who had been the officials of the Roman em Empire, mm. they used them to administer. They were the. They knew how to do this. The 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 all of the Arabs were from the desert. They didn't know how to administer an empire, mm. and also um, they, they would use Christians to build their mosques. So the mosques looked like the architecture of the Christian church, churches wow. at the time. But what's really interesting is as uh, time goes on, the, the the Muslims settle in, and they some of them start to say. It's obvious that the Christian civilization has some things we don't have. And so they had the Christians translate um, Greek philosophy, science, medicine into Arabic. And this fervor gets transfer transferred, not just from, it's not just in the religion, it gets transferred into this new knowledge that the Arabs didn't have. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know how long the this would last, but there is this flourishing of the Islamic civilization, and they far surpass where the Christians are in the early Middle Ages. Their civilization is clearly, it's, it's because of the fervor and the newness of all this knowledge. Mm -hmm. The Christians had it, but they kind of weren't, well, they kind of stale, they just stuck mm -hmm. uh, where they were, whereas the um, Muslims had something new and they worked with it. And so, when you get into the Middle Ages, the, even the Christians looking over into the Islamic world, they they would have, they may not have voiced this, but they knew that that civilization was advanced over what the Christian was at that time. Now, eventually that shifts, but I think that's important because I think that made the Christians listen to some of the things that the Muslims were saying. Islam is very legal oriented. It affected Christianity. Christianity started to shift and become more legally oriented. And the Catholic Church oh. started doing more uh, writing of laws, et cetera. Um, and it's partly through that that this whole question of, of uh, indulgences eventually comes up, which is going to start the Reformation, mm -hmm. that it shifts Christianity. It's not that they never had any rules or laws, but it shifts them from a focus on uh, faith, it doesn't ruin that totally or at all, but it, it, it shifts it from that focus to how do I, how, what do I do? Hmm. You know, I have to do this. I have to do that. So, um, that's one shift. And when Islam conquers an area, it's it, Islamic faith says it, it should never go back to the infidel. And if it does, it's legitimate for them to launch a battle and recapture that place. And so Christians are looking at this obviously better civilization and they're hearing some of these things that Islam says. And at least subconsciously, some of this starts to affect the hmm. Christians and how they think about their own faith. Now, I'm not I, I personally don't think it ruined the faith. I, I think it it uh, polluted it somewhat. Hmm. And one one place that it uh, that is one place that it really caused a problem was uh the Crusades. So the Christians did believe it was okay to defend themselves. That would be a mm -hmm. just war. But probably the first time the Christians have a crusade or a war where they try to force pagans to become Christians is in 788. So there's an obvious connection here. They have never done that before. Yeah. The, it, okay. the, the Frankish king conquers the Saxon tribes in Germany. And then they throw off his uh, government and he comes in again. 
and he forces them to become Christians. They had never done this before. That's very Islamic. You either you either convert, if you're a pagan, you convert huh. or you are going to be killed. And that's so they the first crusade is actually not called a crusade, but it's it's a war that's fought in 788 against the Saxons. Uh, years later, um, the uh, oh, by the way, after a while, relations between the Christian nations and the Islamic nations kind of settle down and Christian pilgrims can go to the Middle East and they can visit the religious sites. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then some Turks come in and they start to cause problem for, problems for the pilgrims. And that's when a pope, uh, I believe his name was Urban, calls a council. And at the council, he says that um, our brothers and sisters in the East are being uh, oppressed by the infidel. And God wants us to go and free the promised land. God wills it. And that's the beginning of the first Mm. crusade. A bunch of the men who were there promised to go and others in other areas promised to go. And they actually conquered several uh, or they conquered that strip of land from northern along the coast from Mm. northern Syria down to uh, where we would call Gaza. They conquered that area and they made it the uh, crusader states. Mm. 